Yesterday when I went here, my wife requested me to bring the trolley. It's a trolley bag, you know, just a small bag with some food stuff there. And I was, I was stopped by the um, security guard at the MRT. And I told my wife, he joked, she joked me, she said that you cannot be trusted. You look like a uh, parang terrorista ka siguro. Because he said, all the time I pass through the MRT, nobody uh, asked me to check, to check my baggage or the trolley. It's, it's the first time she learned and uh, it happened to me. He said, hindi, hindi na ako bagay, siro magdala ng trolley. My point today is that we are, we are always in, in, in a life, in a daily experience of suspicion, di ba? Um, Ang ating, ang ating default in our society today is that you do not need to trust the person. You must always be a suspect that you do not need to trust the person. There's a fear, there's that anxiety and apprehension that this person, can I trust him? Can I follow him? We lack this confidence today to trust people, especially in, you know, following them. Paul uh, here declared that you can follow me. Brethren, be you followers together of me, and mark them who walks, so as you have us as an example in our King James Version. We need leaders today, godly leaders whom we can follow. It is as if that we live in a world where we lack godly leaders whom we can follow. So today we are going to look into some guidelines that we can, some uh, principles that we can follow. This picture is a very good picture of what it means to follow, right? A boy following his, ma his mother or his father. It's because there is a relationship. Christianity is about relationship. It's following a life. It's not about ideas. It's not about doctrines alone. Christianity is about sharing life. So we are here because we are a community that share life together. So what does it mean to follow? Now, there are Three essential guidelines for us to know if we are going to follow uh, somebody in the Lord. There are three essentials. So let me ask, uh, um, take this in the form of question. Because in verse 17 to verse 21, Philippians 3 to 17 to 21, there are three sets of people here. Paul was talking about himself and the people around him, I and the people around me. In verse 18 and 19, it talks about the people whom we are going to forsake. These are the worldly people. For many walk, I told you, and this time I told you again with tears in my eyes, they are the people whom we are going to forsake or forbid to follow. And the last in verse 20 and 21 is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the last person that you can see in this passage. So let's lay, look at them uh, one at a time today. So the first guideline, the first guideline question is, who are we going to follow? Very clear in verse 17, brothers, join in imitating me. Join in following me. Was Paul very arrogant about his life? Does he sound very arrogant here? Does he sound very proud here? that you can really follow me. I think we are going to look at Paul's life. He was a humble person. He was a person who was full of humility. There was an authority that he said, you can follow me because I am also a follower of Christ, which we can see in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1 later. But let me tell you that when Paul invited or challenged the church at Philippi to follow him, it was not because he, was, uh, no, he has no relationship with them, but he has a strong relationship with them. I believe as parents, ha, tayong mga tatay, tayong mga nanay, tayong mga parents, we cannot demand respect, but we can earn respect if they knew that we care for people, we care for our children, isn't it? 
You cannot earn, uh, you cannot demand respect, you cannot demand following, you can just earn it. As I said, that churches should not be about control, it should be about influence, right? Ang ating pagkakristyano, hindi na i-control natin yung tao. If you control people, that's cultic already, kulto na yun. But we influence people in the Lord. People follow because they decide for it, not because they are controlled. That's the problem of cults. Cults are controlled. Parang decision di galing sa kanila, kundi they are just brainwashed and they are deceived to follow a leader who has malicious intent for the subjects, for his people. But Paul here was relating about a relationship that he has with the church. In chapter 1, we know of how he cared for this church, how he loved this church, how he suffered for this church, how he gave a, a, an authentic example to them. And there were people alongside with him. We need, like he said in the later portion of this verse, and keep your eyes on those who walk according to example you have in us. So he talks about himself in the community, godly community. Now let's learn of how he express this challenge of imitating Christ and imitating himself in other books of the Bible and other, other epistles that he wrote. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, I urge you then, be imitators of me. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. In another book in Thessalonians, and you became imitators of us. You see the change here? From me to us. And of the Lord, for you receive the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14. For you, brothers, became imitators of the churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea, for you suffered the same things from your own countrymen as they did from the Jews. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. So that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. In other words, Paul was not only saying that you are going to follow me, but follow us. We are a community. We are a community of people. And what kind of people? How are you going to describe them? Let's go back to verse 17. Brothers, join me in imitating me, I mean, and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. So we are a community and we have set an example, the word example here is, means pattern, to print. It, it means to mold something out of a certain molder that it can have a certain kind of form or printing. So, ang ibig sabihin ni Pablo dito is that we, as a community of believers, have a certain kind of character and conduct. A community with a certain kind of life and conduct. So, Christians are in this world, but we are not of this world. Christians are different than this world or the people in this world. What makes them different is the gospel. What makes them different is because of Jesus who is in them. It's not the way we appear uh, in the physical, in the, in, in the outside. It's not. It's the character, it's the conduct that we have in Christ. It means it is something that is visible Visible in a sense that people can see a change or a difference in your life. Diba? Sabi ni Jesus yan, and Napoleon in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is what? A new creation. All things has passed away. Behold, all things are new. So Paul was looking, was saying here that you mark them or mark us and follow our example. And another thing we can see in this verse is in, in this word, keep yourselves or keep your eyes on those who walk. Pay attention. Pay attention that you are going to attentively, purposely, carefully learn from them. So in summary, who are we going to follow? We are going to follow by identifying a community. You cannot grow in the Lord, you cannot be godly if you are not going to identify the community. You cannot be an, uh, uh, 
a Lone Ranger Christian. You need a community. I need a community. That's why in our church, we emphasize and we strongly uh, encourage each one of us to be part of the community, the care groups, the small groups that we have in our church. Because as the church grow, you might be in a community, but you are not connected with the, with the people. You can be lost in a crowd. You can be lonely in a crowd. You can be part of the activity of the church maybe, but are you really part of the community? Community that you can share. It's the godly or the gospel community. It's a community that loves the Lord. Identify the community of a certain character or conduct. Christians should be different, not just for the sake of being different, but because of the gospel. Uh, balikan natin yung actually sa ating bulletin today in our bulletin today there is a write-up of Pastor Jason there about the CG, about the care group and the later portion of that article he wrote about what should be the reason why we gather as a gospel or a Christian or a care group I mean ang rason hindi na we have the same interests or the same hobbies or the same Likes or the, the same, uh, in, yeah, the same uh, sports or whatever interest uh, that we have. The reason should be the gospel. The gospel is this one. Jesus died for my sin. He was buried and three days later he rose again and he's coming back. It means that the gospel is the good news that Jesus came down to die for our sins. And he is going to go back here to receive us into His glory. And that's the gospel. The gospel is the cause why we are a community. The gospel is the cause why we are changed. The gospel is the cause why we become different. It's the change that is coming from the inside out. Identify the community of a certain conduct and commit to imitate this community. Keep yourselves, or keep your eyes, what do you mean? Kung balikan natin yung sinabi niya sa verse 17, Keep your eyes, pay so, so much attention or close attention to this. Don't just uh, be casual. It means that you should be committed. I hope na sa ating church, as we emphasize on discipleship, we emphasize so much on care group, um, it will be more Prominent and it will be more, uh, it will become more significant in a sense. Na ito yung ating focus as a church to grow people. We are not here only to gather people, but to grow people in the Lord. For people to know, then they will grow and they will go. Can you now understand why our mission is shortened into these three words? Our mission is what? Leading generations into a life changing relationship with Jesus Christ. But to make it more concrete and as easy to be, to, to be remembered, we shorten it like, no, then you are going to grow, and then you are going to go and serve Christ. So that's what it, we, we desire to everybody. You know? We want to ask our people just to know Christ as their Savior, but to grow in Christ, that they will mature in their character, in their conduct, in their life, so that they will go, so that they will serve. So if you are a Christian, we want you to be part of a church where you are going to, to go into this direction to serve the Lord. Now, if this is really prominent and very significant in our church, I hope that you will be encouraged to really pay attention to this. You will be part of this because <clears throat> nobody can force you to follow. You can bring the carabao into the river, but you cannot force the carabao to drink the water. You can only commit yourself to grow by imitating, by following. Should the church have not failed in encouraging people, providing platforms for people to grow, now this is our responsibility. Are we committed to be part? Are we committed to follow? Are we committed really to be an imitator for, the godly, for this godly community? We need this community. Huh? Community of right conduct, of a certain kind, commit in that community. Now, bakit 
in-emphasize yung commitment to this community. The second guideline will tell us why we are going to be committed. Who to forsake? Now, if we are going to follow a godly community, we must identify also the group of people we must forsake, we must forbid. And Paul was so emotional here. Look at what he said in verse 18. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears. Now, when Paul said, Inulit-ulit ko ito. I have told you this before and now even tell you and now I'm telling you and you know I'm crying when I tell you this. Why? We don't have, we don't have the answer here in this, in this uh, particular verses but I surmise and I believe that there were Christians who fall along the way. There were Christians who became discouraged who were pulled back into worldliness, who were pulled back of rejecting Christ. And it pained the heart of the apostle. Walang masabi natin mga kapatid, as I told you last week, walang neutrality sa Christian life. If you are not progressing in your Christian life, it means that you are regressing. You cannot stay idle and say, I'm just stagnant. I'm just idle. Just like this guy, after church, he said to the pastor, Pastor, I'm thankful in my Christian life because hindi naman ako nag-progress, hindi naman ako nag atras I'm not progressing, I'm not also regressing, I'm just here, standing still. This guy drove his car back home, nadaanan siya ng pastor because his car was stuck on the mud. The pastor stopped and rolled his windshield and said, Brother, you are not progressing, you are not regressing, but you are stuck on the mud. I mean, there's no such thing as I can be the same as I am if I'm not going to progress in my Christian life because the world is so strong in pulling you down, in pulling you back. Paul was emotional here, very emotional. I tell you this even with tears. I keep repeating this to you. I mean, there is always a need for us to be reminded, reminded all over again that this world is not friendly to us. How he described this world? These guys, they walk as enemies of the cross. They are anti-cross. The word, uh, word enemies here means they are hateful of the cross. For us who love Jesus, can we say with Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, for the preaching of the cross to them is foolishness, but for us, it is the power of God. Para sa kanila, ang cross is a funny thing. The, the, it's, the, the, they hate the cross, the maces of the cross. And be watchful because there are so many churches today, big churches, that did not emphasize so much of the cross of Christ. They want just to be entertained in the church. They, they want just to be, you know, just like a motivational speaker that will guide you of how to be a good person, how to be a good employee, how to, to, to have a good behavior, how to be a good husband to your wife. I'm not saying that this is, not, this is wrong. I'm not saying that this is not good. But churches like us are for the gospel. And we are here not to change the behavior of people itself, but we are going to touch hearts of people. The gospel should change heart, not just behavior. If I do this way, what is behavioral change? If you do this way, this won't be the result. And people don't want to, to, to talk about sin don't want to be a rebuke of their wrongs and their failings or their sins because they just want to hear what they want to hear. They don't want to, to, to hear about the cross because the cross is an offense to them. And then in verse 19, their end is destruction. Their end is a loss. Now we know in the Bible, in Proverbs 16 verse 18, that the cause of destruction is pride, arrogance. Pride comes before a fall. They are so proud, they don't want God, they are God themselves. And in fact, in the next statement, their God is their belly, is their stomach. They are appetite-driven. Now, I say this because uh, not we are better than others, but as a warning, because Paul was so strong in warning us here. 
that we should be careful not to go with people who are appetite-driven. There is a, a growing movement today of a certain Christian groups or culture. They call it the uh, name it and claim it group. You name it and you claim it, by faith you can have it. You see? It is a form of, of theology that whatever you desire, because God will bless you, God will prosper you, God will give you health and wealth in life, as long as you believe it with all your heart, you can name it and you can claim it. It means that what I want, I can have it. What I want in my life, what I desire in my life, I can have it because I can just name it and claim it. I'm not saying that they are not sincere. They are very sincere in this, but I think that's the wrong theology. I think that's the wrong theology. Why? Because <clears throat> you, are, you are putting God as your servant now. You are putting God now as somebody who, like a Santa Claus, like somebody, a, a Jenny in a bottle where, oh, I want that and I can have it because you would meant... You are, you are my God, and you meant to bless me. You are here to bless me. I can believe you because you are going to bless me. Now, tell, I tell you, this theology is very dangerous because it caters to the flesh. Now, sino ba sa atin hindi gustong mayaman? Hindi ba sa atin hindi gustong maging maganda yung katawan natin? Hindi ma, hindi, sino ba sa atin hindi gusto na wala tayong problema mga kabataan natin, successful, mga smart sa klase, Sino bang hindi gusto sa ganun? That's why it's very appealing to the flesh. That's why this kind of belief is so enticing to people today. And even Christians are enticed. But the reality is this, mga kapatid. God is a sovereign God. And we are not going to reduce Him as like us, that He will be like a servant that I can name what I want, I can name what I like, and then God will give it to me because it's His I, I can look at him as a, a Santa Claus that can give me what I want. No. Ang Panginoon ay Panginoon, tayo ay dito. He is a holy God, He's a righteous God. If ever He gives us something that is not pleasant to you and to me, there is a reason and we cannot question His sovereignty. God is a gracious God. God is a good God. No question about it. But don't question His goodness and graciousness when you have problems in life when you have troubles in life because His goodness and graciousness has not changed. It's your interpretation and my interpretation of God's goodness and love that has changed, that is flawed. Mali lang ito ang interpretasyon natin sa pagmamahal at sa kabutihan ng Panginoon pag anon. That's why don't just quote Romans 8, 28 without quoting verse 29. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and who are the called according to His purpose. Don't fail to quote 29. Kasi ang verse 29, nagsasabi dyan that, that we might be conformed to Christ. So the goodness there is not the goodness on how you would like it to happen. The goodness is not that you, it will result to a pleasant and a favorable to you. No. The, the goodness there in verse 29, okay, let me just uh, say that in, in the scriptures. Huh? Romans chapter 8, verse 29. <clears throat> For whom he did foreknow, also he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. You have to connect 28 and 29 because you cannot just interpret 28 with out of context. The goodness there is because God allowed these circumstances in your life for you to be like Christ. Listen, kung may mga kahirapan tayo, may mga problema tayo, may mga, mga uh, hindi natin maintindihan ng mga pangyayari sa buhay natin. And if you believe that God is sovereign and is working for good, you allow yourself to be under this formation molding this transformation and change in your life that you'll be like Christ. You'll be transformed like Him to conform to His image. That's the good thing that Romans 8.28 is saying about. Not 
the good that I want it to happen or I want to, uh, to experience it. That's why Paul reminded us here that be careful that you're not going to follow these people who, who will say, what can fill my stomach, what can fill me good, you know? The stomach is a picture of being full, satisfied in the flesh. And he moved on here, the glory in their shame. The glory in their shame. How will you, how will you uh, react if you are a teacher uh, in a classroom? How will you react if you are a teacher in a classroom? And then may mga estudyante who did not pass in the exam. It's a final exam. It's a final exam. And then itong mga estudyante na to, after they knew that they failed in the exam, the final exam, they cannot make it to the next level, magparty sila. Ah, pasalamat tayo. Hindi <laughs> tayo nakapasa. Pahamat tayo, mag-rejoice tayo. We glory because we did not pass. What, what will you, how will you react in that? Supposed to be, this should be shameful. This should be embarrassed, but they glory in their shame. You know, may mga tao na ganun ngayon eh. Um, it's so hard these days because you are coming to a time where when we are going to look into issues and address issues, you'll become politically incorrect, right? Yung may mga tao na at first they know that that is wrong, but now they are not looking at it as wrong already, but instead they are rejoicing on that wrong. Kaya nga, kung i-proliferate natin itong Itong feeling na to, or itong notion na to, itong norm na to, it becomes very dangerous for us Christians. Forsake these people who glory in their shame. Because simbis ikahiya na nila itong ginagawa nila, nag-glory pa sila. Nag, nag, tata, nag, nag, na, natutuwa pa sila sa kanilang ginagawa. These people have no concept na what is right and what is wrong. Ngayon, hindi ba? Pag may naiwan na bag sa taxi or may naiwan na bag sa bus, kung isa uli mo, sisihin ka pa. Right? Sisihin ka pa kasi sinauli mo. Pira na yun. Sinauli mo pa. Bakit, bakit ganun ang feeling ng tao ngayon? Pag gumagawa ka ng tama, mali ka. That is why, kung may maggagawa ng kabutihan ngayon, sa airport, sa taxi, maging viral sa Facebook, maging viral sa social media. Itong tao na to, i- ano natin, para ba hindi na common ba? It's very uncommon today to see people doing good things. Because people maybe are praising and glorifying on the, the simple things, right? Nabaliktad ng mundo ngayon, right? I hope that uh, may isang may isang nag uh, taxi driver na isinauli niya yung pera no so nga, no I, I think I do not need to be praised about it I just did the right thing I just did the right thing we, we, we are living in this generation where this is so strong in influencing us na kung di tayo mag take a stand as Christians we will be siphoned and drawn back because these people are so strong and their minds are on earthly things, are really worldly. The Bible tells us that this is the description of the last days. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, and appeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, Treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having the appearance of godliness but denying its power, avoid such people. At the beginning of this chapter, Philippians chapter 3, Paul mentioned about a certain group of people. They are the legalists. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of concision. Philippians chapter 3 verse 2. And he closed this chapter with this 
group of people who was on the other extreme. While Paul addressed the legalistic people as wrong, he, like, he also addressed these people who are licentious. Ang mga legalistic, they want to follow the law when in fact they want to incorporate the, gasp, uh, the, the law into the gospel. But dito naman, itong mga tao na to, they want to get rid of the law. The cross, no, nothing. From morality to immorality. From legalism to licentiousness. Worldliness. They are just concerned about the body. What fills me. What satisfies me. Kung saan ka masaya, doon ko kayo susuportahan. Parang ganun na idea. Just feeling it good. You come to, to a group of people where you see, masaya lang. But the gospel is already not there. Avoid such people. They are worldly people. They just mind earthly things. It's very strong uh, reminder for us not to love this world. Even John said, John said, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, pride of life, the lust of the eyes, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Do not love the world or the things of the world. Be strong to commit yourself to imitate godly people and that's the only way we are going to forsake pe- these ungodly people. Kaya nga, kung hindi kayo mag-commit to be part of a godly community, a gospel community, malamang nakakalungkot because maybe these people who were part of the fellowship before were drawn back into this worldliness and Paul was so emotional if the, he reminds if he if it things of these people. He reminded these Christians at Philippi with tears because he was so sad that this happened to, his, to some Christians maybe who fall astray. Now, bakit ba now we have to commit to follow God's people and to forsake these people because of a certain uh, truth also of what is our focus as Christians? How are we going to focus? This is the third guideline. Verse 20, but our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our citizenship, we do not belong here, we belong there. We are not citizens in this world. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. So our focus is to wait for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Siguro isa yun sa mga nakapanghina sa atin bilang Kristiyano. Kung nalimutan natin, if we forget that Jesus is coming again. I know of, of stories, you know, that there are two um, in love in the uh, couple. They want to get married. One went abroad. The other one was left in the Philippines. Pero hindi nakatuluyan. Bakit ba? Hindi nakahintay. Hindi nakahintay. Kala hindi nababalik. To wait is, is, is not really easy if you're waiting for something like a hopeless case, right? Especially when you hear reports that, oh, that guy is already like this, like that. Oh, that guy, there's rumors like that. But our God, Jesus, will not fail His promise. If MacArthur said, I shall return, and He returned, how much more for Jesus said, I shall return, He will surely come again. Don't fail to focus on the coming of Jesus Christ because this is the only way whereby we can be free from the pull of the world. Itong katawan natin, napakahina talaga, no? Whether we recognize it or not, we are affected by what's going on in this world. I hope that I have a special body that will not be tired, that will not succumb to weaknesses, but I'm enchained in this fleshly body. It's... it's the desire of my spirit is to do this, but as Paul said in Romans chapter 7, what I want to do, that I do not do. What I want to do, hindi niya magawa because of this flesh. You, know, you see, lalo na ngayon, dito sa mundo natin, where sinfulness is very rampant around. You want to follow the Lord, but there are so many temptations around. You want to evade, you want to escape from the world, but... The reality is that you cannot. You ride in the buses, you ride on the trains, you, 
you talk with people, there are always temptations to succumb to the temptation of the flesh. But our, our hope is that there is a time that Jesus will come again and He will change us. Jesus is coming again and this is our focus. We have to follow uh, the godly people because of this hope that He had in the Lord. Looking for that blessed hope or waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ will come again, Jesus will transform our vile body, this debased, very low body, to be like His glorious body, by the power that enables Him even to subject all things to Himself. Itong katawan natin ngayon bilang mga Kristiyano, itong katawan natin, ito talaga nakakabigay ng problema natin. But time will come that you will not be worried about this body because this body will be transformed into a glorious body. The body like that of the Lord Jesus Christ. Like His glorious body. There is a change that He's going to do in your life and in my life. And on that time, there will be no problem anymore about the temptations of the flesh. Kaya nga, mahirapan tayo ngayon mag-diet, ano? Pagbaba pa natin mamaya, may, may daing, may tuyo. Pag nakaamoy tayo ng tuyo at daing, hindi natin mapigilan. Parang bilang Pilipino, no? Para bang, para bang hinatak tayo. San ba yun? Hmm. If you are on diet, don't pass by the, 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 the places where there are displays of food because you will, you'll have a problem actually. We cannot just help but be enticed because of the weakness of our flesh. Why is it that it's hard for us to be disciplined in our exercise? Okay, bukas na ako mag-jogging. Mm. O ngayon na, mag-jogging ka na. Sinabi ko nga bukas eh. <laughs> Why is it very hard? Because it's, we love sleep. We, we, want, we, we love our bed so much. You know? That's how we, how we enjoy life. Sometimes, you, you know, I heard one, one, one uh, preacher, his father said to him, Great advice and buy an expensive bed and a good bed because you will spend one third of your life on your bed. <laughs> That's why there are so many people today who cannot get out up from their bed because they want to enjoy their bed. They don't want to run and exercise. Okay. This body is we, we know that this is the right thing for us to do to diet, to have an exercise, to be disciplined, to not eat that one that one, but we know that that is right, but our practices, our doing sometimes are not right. We are really entrapped in this body of flesh. But thank the Lord that there will come a time that we will become like Him, having this glorious body. He described this all in 1 John 3, verse 2 and 3, that we shall be like Him. When He appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Therefore, we have to purify ourselves as He is pure. The reason for us to live a godly life because He is coming again. Don't forget that focus. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 58. <clears throat> a great chapter for us to take note about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. But let me read just um, these verses, 51 to 58. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Focus on Jesus. He's coming. There will be no problem of death, sin. There will be no problem of weakness, of temptation anymore. Thank God for this victory. This is the reason why we are, we are going to live a pure life among godly Christians among godly community, the godly community, let us serve the Lord together. Let us be faithful. 
1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The reason for us to be motivated to be faithful, to always moving on for the Lord, is because of our focus on the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there, are, there is a saying that goes this way, that there are so many people today who are so heavenly minded that they are no earthly good. Sobra nilang pag-iisip sa spiritual na mga bagay na walang nagagawa dito sa mundo. Are Christians like that? May mga tao na ganun, di ba? Na, oh, I don't need to work hard. I don't need to earn money because someday Jesus will come again. So, lazy. I don't bother to work hard and to fulfill my, my, my potential and my gifts like that kasi darating na si Kristo. I'm not living for this world. Are we so heavily minded that we are no earthly good? But you know what? History will prove that this is wrong. That is wrong. According to C.S. Lewis, if you read history, you will find that the Christians who did most for the present world were just those who thought most of the next. Sino ang nag-establish ng mga hospitals sa mga remote areas in the jungle? Sino ang nag-educate sa mga savages in the forests, in the jungles? Sino ang pumunta doon even though there are hardships, they might, be, they might die there of disease? These are the Christian missionaries who believe that Jesus is coming again. And because Jesus is coming again, we have to preach the gospel to the whole world. And these people must know that Jesus loved them. And when they went there, they show their love to these people by establishing hospitals, schools, mission schools. And these people had benefited because of these people who are so heavenly minded that they want to give their lives for the Lord. Are you heavenly minded so much that you want to serve the Lord for others? Sana ganun tayo. Sana magpagamit tayo sa Panginoon. Sana po, we feel this, the urgency, because I know and I believe that Jesus is coming very soon. I cannot waste my time. I must serve the Lord. Let us be followers of Jesus. Let us remind ourselves to follow, follow the godly men, godly community. Be involved and forsake worldly men who can influence you to, to, to follow the worldly things in this world and focus on Jesus. Let us pray.